Welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery. Tonight we are going to tour the exhibition Songs of Winter, Songs of a Summer, featuring the paintings of Lynn Campbell and John Sebchik. John Sebchik sadly passed away on March 1st. Joining me this evening are Lynn Campbell, as well as artist friends Leslie Fenton and Henry Martin, who will read a selection of John and Lynn's poems as we tour the exhibit. And to, I'm going to read a quote by Lynn Campbell, but first I'm going to uh, spotlight the gallery video. And to quote Lynn, <clears throat> John and I met a few days before Valentine's Day in 1991. It was at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. I posed as a portrait model for a class John was in. I came into the studio early and John was there. We were the only ones in the room. Uncharacteristically, he followed me across the room when I entered and sat down next to me on the modeling stand to talk. He was confused to see me as the model, recognizing me as a student there. I explained that I had dropped out because of illness. He was immediately sympathetic and took me under his wing. We talked to each other during every break. We continued talking for the next 33 years. John and I had everything in common. We were both painters, both poets. We had the same taste in art and literature. We love nature as a holy thing. We became bird watchers together. Our paintings were influenced by what we experienced and saw together. We both worked from memory and imagination and from life. John made the small paintings in the show from life using a handy cigar box taken out into the field as a little portable easel. And now Leslie Fenton will read the first poem. Hello, Leslie. Hello. I'll be reading two poems by John. First poem is titled, New Found Land. To Arcadia, to Giverny, Fontainebleau or Arles, to Brittany or Fiji, the Marquesas or Morocco, to Maine, the Hudson, or Cape Cod, Truro, or the Hamptons Call. Perhaps to Mexico, Colombia, or Yosemite, to the distant most outlandish place. Keep a bowl of soup, a glass of wine, a key west of the heart and mind, where art can grow on half the cost and half again, or less than that. Or better still, a newfound land, a sandbar off Belize or Khan, to while away, to paint, to plan. The art utopia no one can achieve in life, but hanging dreams of it export the beauty to which all resort. The next poem is titled, Oh, How the Stars Hold. Oh, how the stars hold still and ocean waves again form again. Oh, how couples hold hands or late at night embrace. How is it all repeats as the cricket trills the seconds of a summer from the sill? Oh, how eternity is made of what repeats the sounding of the scent. And into this we glide, cast off from self. The warm dark, like the dark of childhood, the sunlight bright as snow, even leaves fall down as brightly as before, and rain commits its bloom upon the heart as gray as then, as gray as some tomorrow when the funeral for happiness is due. 
And into it, you'll go with round umbrella, hammering the notes of heaven like the stars. Oh, how the stars hold still and ocean waves again form again. Hello, my name is Lynn Campbell. I'm the wife of John Sepchik. I'd just like to say a few things before I begin reading some of our work. Um, I'd like to first express my thanks to Tina and Mike for this show. Planning and preparing for it was a bright spot for John, but he was very ill. We both enjoyed working towards it and thinking about it. It took John away from his suffering. It brought him back into his real life, his life as an artist. I will always be so grateful for that. I will never forget what a difference it made to him. And now this show is helping me in my suffering. It gives me a place to be with John, to be surrounded by him and his work, to see our paintings together, resonating with each other the way we did together in life. Thank you too to Bill Scott, dear Billy, for his role in getting us this show. All three, Tina, Mike, and Bill, came up with the idea together. Thank you. I'm going to start by reading one of my prose poems. It's called, You Have Never. You have never cupped a bird in your hand. The anxiety of the bird would be too much. You have tread through snow, mucked through marshes, shivered at night for the sake of stars. You have thirsted through heat waves. You have felt steam rising from the marsh in waves, blurring the distance. You have become the blurry distance. You have disappeared like a mirage. There are stones in your gullet to make things manageable. You hide reserves of sleep. You could not grow a thick coat like a feral cat or slink up the steps like one or wild your way through winter. Squirrel nests make it through all seasons and in winter show like monuments in the trees. You are but a portion of wind. The sun fills you out. The moon dresses you up. Next, I'm going to read three poems by John, my dear husband, John Sevchik. The first one is called, A Painting is a Painting. A painting is a painting. It's not like you or me. Nobody gets older. No one ever sleeps. It's a stillness made of life with meaning there. You feel it as you watch it, even as you stare at those forever praying we're lying nude, aware, not of us, but God, and the artist never there. We travel time to then, and then to us appears. Time becomes transparent, and what is far comes near. Who gave their life to painting that we can know life more? The artist in his garret, the model in her maze. We think of things self-evident, when we observe those lives frozen in the minerals of pigments and the mind. But what of art's intention? Does it think or know the way? The artist isn't talking. There's nothing more to say. Who made a painting matter, then vanished long ago? Who gave their life to painting, so we enjoy life more? This next poem by John is called Winter Time. In summer, moon gazing. In winter, fireplace watching. Somewhere in them lies the mystery of creation. Life, looking back from where it comes from, studies itself in me. Outside, even the moon looks covered in snow. 
while the sun has given forests, water, earth, and stone for the mystery of fire, its cousin in the hearth. I am passing from and to. If I paint, I leave myself behind. If I write, I write to you and to the future. Who can speak to the past? Who will thank us if we do the right thing by the future? They will have their own chances. They will not think of the past or the future, but like the ember, they will burn in their own fashion. The moon will be the soul and mirror of the sun. They will dream together like we do at night. Time is the speed no one can control. It holds apart all things, all loneliness, all of us. The last poem I'll read by John is called In the Delirium of Summer. Chicory and the high hill willow sway with the pendulum breeze toward magnolia oil. The perfume of dark evening, moonlit suede blossoms hiding in midnight leaves, and the loaves and the fish beating in the bodies of the flying geese. Oh, in the miracles of shade and the visions in shadows come lingerings of day's ends and the glimmers of stars in lemon fireflies beaconing each other and us, and the streets of trees in their columns, their parthenons of grandeur, their pantheons of leafy oculi, their promenades of chattering birds, note cards of butterflies and moths, east falling to the west and the river's gloaming light. Under these spells, I wonder nightly of your arms of light, ascending to the origins of things, Ascending invocations of the hearth and the roofings of our cries, our hair in the windy while of youth, forgotten, left behind, unechoed. Next, our friend, the painter, Henry Martin, will read a poem by John. Thank you, Lynn. Wow, it's beautiful to be able to see these, these paintings while, while hearing, the, um, hearing the poetry. And so now I've opened up the poem on my, I can see it before me and I can't see you, but Lynn, um, like, you, Lynn and I overlapped at the Academy and I met John through Lynn. Uh, I've always had a very special um, admiration, Lynn, for you, for your your sensitivity and your thoughtfulness and your sincerity. It's like you're a very you're a very rare individual and you're very lucky to have found John. It's It's just wonderful to know both of you. And I'm really, uh, privileged to be part of this this poetry reading. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Henry. Of course, of course. Okay, uh, this is by John Sevchik. It is titled Art in the World. Ah, uh, and I'm just honored to be able to read it to you, okay? Art in the canvas before you, art in the field of life, art in the trees and the sun. Art in the melody of cicadas. Art in the blue of the sky. Nowhere the same. Art in the painter's hands, supporting and moving. Art as the dance of the eyes. Art so we see together. Art that brings day into night. Art of the magically inspired. Art of the stumbled upon. Art that doesn't yet know the name it will own. Art never made for the money. Art without parents or friends. Art as the world has given us art in the shadows and light, art in the color of pigment, art when you cannot imagine it will ever come through you again, art as a privilege of living, art as an illness, art as the thing held apart, art that no one understands, art after school, after work, art for the other in you, art in the mystic order, art that includes all of us, art that finds the human, art that is soul, art free and of freedom, art given up 
as a gift. John Subject. Thank you. This is my Kobas again, and I am going to read the statement that John Sebchik wrote for the show. Songs of winter, songs of a summer. We remember by the contrast of the world. Immersion is not the idea behind this show, but the way things are different due to the slant of sun and the hue of the weather. Places remembered this way reach different conditions and their realization of change goes inward via the figure or via place in time's story. Both artists experience loneliness in different ways, and that is the song of the seasons, if anything is. This is not a personal loneliness, for they are happily married. They instead share a feeling for nature that puts their feelings in a mutual state of mystery, reverie, and wonder though together they are also on separate itineraries. Work varies from plein air to work from memory, imagination, and dream. John Sepchik. That concludes tonight's tour. Thank you so much to Leslie Fenton and Henry Martin for being here to read. A special thank you to Lynn Campbell and John Sepchik. Thank you so much for the opportunity to read. It's, it really has been an honor to read John's words and look at the work. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Mike and Tina.